Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this episode, I'm going to be installing the bed frame. If you're new here, I've been making videos on the entire build process of this van from start to finish, and all of the previous episodes are in the description down below. I'm about to get started on building the bed frame, and I've already cut the pieces down to size. I'm using two by threes. You can also do this out of 80-20. I know a lot of people like to make their bed frames out of 80-20, but I like to make it out of two by threes because they're easier to get a hold of, they're easier to work with, you can buy them anywhere, and it's also a lot cheaper. So I have everything cut down to size, and it's already painted, and now it's just time to assemble it. So when designing your bed, you wanna think about maximizing storage underneath, but also you want it as low as possible so that you can still store your tallest item. And for me, that's my mountain bike. So when I drop the seat post all the way down on my mountain bike, I need a minimum of 32 inches so that I could still uh, fit the bike under here with the front wheel off. So the whole bed frame is basically built around that. I just have this kind of laid out just to check the height. Those are 32. And then that means the top will come to 34 and a half. These two by threes aren't actually three inches tall. They're two and a half. The top of the bed will come right there. And I'll have a six inch mattress, and that should still be plenty of room for head space and foot space in the cutout. First piece I'm gonna cut is the piece from here to here. And it should be the same for the back, so it'll be two pieces. This piece here is gonna go right here in the corner, but I needed to notch for that wire going to the battery monitor. So let's use the table saw, make this little notch here. Let's see, that fits in nice. Got the front support beam in, and uh, now I'm just putting this rear one in, and I'm using these L brackets, like this, to attach everything. I have the mountain bike in here now just to make sure everything's gonna fit, and it looks like it should work out well. And uh, this will, I'm also putting this here so I could plan out where I'm going to put these cross beams so that they're not in the way of the seat. So I think I'm going to come in 18 inches. I'll put one here, 18 inches from here, one right here, and then one right in the middle should be out of the way of the seat and that should be enough. I think this is gonna be the finished product for the frame of the bed. And normally I would have to uh, put a support beam here and here and then same in the front. But because I was able to screw in where the shower is, it's actually really sturdy. I uh, kind of jumped up and down on it, couldn't really move it or bend it. So I think it's going to be fine without the support beams. And if I ever feel like it's sagging or anything, I could always add them later. But uh, with the shower being up front there, I don't think I need it. If you didn't have the shower, then I would say you definitely need two support beams because uh, this long length can bend a little bit. But this one feels good. Now that the bed frame is finished, next thing I like to do is work on this before I put the plywood on top of the bed so it's a little easier to work down here. And this is the tank I like to use. It's a 28 gallon water tank and it fits around the wheel well. See it has a cut out here. To be honest, 28 gallons is probably a little more than I need. And normally I use a 25 gallon water tank, which is still quite a bit of water. But what I normally do is I box up the wheel well like I did with the solar, and then I put the 20 gallon on top of the boxed in wheel well. And by the end of it, the 25 gallon actually takes up more space than this 28 gallon because this one sits right on the floor. I can just fill it halfway and it, it has a much cleaner look. It um, keeps the weight down lower too, which is good. Keep your uh, weight as low as possible. The van will drive better. Before I put this in, I'm just gonna cut a few pieces of insulation. Just use some regular rolled insulation around the wheel well, kind of tape it on and then we can put the water tank in. Okay, we're all insulated behind here. So now I'm gonna take this two by two, cut it down to length, and what I'll do is I'll 
screw it into the floor along this edge here and then also along the top edge so it doesn't bounce up and down if I go over any bumps and a small one here and another one in the front and that should lock it in place could argue it's unnecessary to cover up screw holes under the bed, but I like to do it. I don't really like to see any screw holes in the entire van when it's finished. I did stuff a little extra insulation in that little crevice there. And now we can put the plywood on. I'm going to bring the first piece to halfway between this seam here. And I like to use half inch sanded plywood. It's a little more expensive, but has a nice finish on it. So I have this side all scribed in with my scribe. And I left a little extra room here that I'm going to cut off. And then I'm going to cut this off right on the uh, beam here. But I recommend scribing that, that edge first. Once you have that in nice and tight, then you can just go under here and I'll make a pencil line right here on each side of the beam. And then when I take it off, I'll cut it right down the middle. And then I can start the other one. Use my chalk line to mark where the beams are. Now I can make sure all the screws are in a nice straight line. This is just uh, screwed down temporarily. I'll need to remove this, put this piece in, and then I can put this piece back overlapping that piece and use this as a line to mark off where I'm going to cut the other piece. You can actually take your measurements to Home Depot and they'll, they'll cut it for you on the big saw they have there that makes a perfect straight cut. So I, I had them cut just the rectangle shape that I need and then I'll make these final notch cuts here on my own. But it's easier if you can have them do it because it's easier to work with a smaller piece than a whole big sheet of plywood. So I actually should be able to unscrew this piece now and flip it over and use this to mark that side there. So now that I have this angle, these two angles cut in, I'll take the other sheet from the other side and I'll put it back on here and overlap it. That way it can mark exactly where I need to cut so they meet perfectly in the middle. Just gonna put a couple screws just to keep it from moving around while I'm marking it. So now I can just mark here. And that should meet up perfectly when I cut this off. looks perfect it's a nice uh, tight seam I'm gonna screw it down right where I want it then the last thing I'll do is mark with a chalk line here when it's all together straight across that way uh, the seam is gonna line up perfectly when I cut this last edge off to the cleaners the curtains should be ready to be picked up if you remember from last episode I was installing the curtains and I just need to have the bottom altered so I'm gonna go pick them up right now I don't recommend going to that cleaners he's doubled the price since the first time I came though 